Well, as you can see, that's the situation now um, on leaving uh, Romanivi uh, to the next phase of my journey. And um, like I hinted a bit earlier, uh, it is um, it is going to be uh, Nordcap, which is the most northerly part of Europe. And um, I've improved my, my kit and uh, a bit more about that later. Okay, well, I'm, I'm well on my way to um, the North Cape now. And um, and finally, uh, I think I've realised and found my first really idyllic Arctic uh, camping spot, um, where the, the ground is firm underneath, and uh, and you can actually walk and not trip over stuff and whatever. And as you can see, I've got stuff sprawled out everywhere after the terrible rain of uh, yesterday and this morning and. Oh, so it's just been miserable, really miserable, just riding and riding, just dripping wet, not being able to warm up at night and, and dry clothes and getting cold, wet, clammy clothes on in the morning and, yeah, not much fun at all. And But this, finding this place and the sun finally coming up makes it all worth it. Now, um, basic, basic stuff. At the moment about camping in the Arctic, this is bear country. And uh, while I was in Roman Navy, I, I, I um, interviewed a lot of peop people, locals, about um, bears and, and how to uh, deal with them. And uh, the consensus was, if there's one thing that was consistent with it, what they said, was um, that bears don't see people as food. So they don't hunt people and they don't kill to eat you. So there must be some other reason. And. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so basically the reasons, uh, the most likely reasons would be uh, startling the bear, uh, getting in between it and its uh, cubs, uh, or um, running away, which would trigger, like, it would trigger a, a reflex uh, attack response probably. Um, so uh, I've been very careful to, um, as I was coming into this forest, I was very careful to whistle and sing. My singing will scare away anything. Um, like to make so I don't take any bear by surprise. And um, you notice there the tent is way over there and I'm setting up my camp spot uh, right here. Um, also stuff drying out, getting all the wood together and uh, really after last night I'm really starving and hanging out for some cooked food and, and, and something warm to drink and all that sort of thing. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and some things that uh, fr from my trip that I thought um, will help me adapt more to, to Arctic cycling conditions. Uh, the first thing is, and I swear uh, this should be in some sort of book as a, as a standard for Arctic um, cycling and touring, is uh, get yourself they cost me 20 euros. A pair of hardcore, hang on, here's the other foot, hardcore um, rubber boots that, uh, th these, are, these are actually industrial boots. Um, I think they're quite beautiful, you know. Um, and they've got steel caps, so I can like, like go through a forest, kick stuff. They, um, as I'm walking my bike along, um, they, um, uh, no, no longer my calves are no longer bruised or, or battered. Uh, if there's any dogs chasing me or wanting to bite at my calves, there's an extra layer of protection. Uh, the boots with the pants over the top, uh, what you get is as you're riding, which is very comfortable riding because of the firm sole on the boots, the water drips and soaks down your pants and over the top and down there. Before that my feet were freezing. Any other sort of shoes the, w the water will drip into your shoes or onto your shoes and the, the rush of the wind is, as one is riding is, is, uh, was getting cold or, or when the temperature was already in the teens. Now, now the temperature is around 8 degrees only. So um, that's one, one great purchase. I'm really happy I did that. It's really helped me. didn't have cold feet today. Uh, another thing was another very, very useful item. Um, in an outdoor shop, I got this uh, um, little trekking hacks axe, and it's very, very sharp, and it is making life so much easier for me. 
and, it, and the weight doesn't get in the way so um, I'm happy to have got that and also a bit of um, local flavour is I got myself a, a locally Romanivi made uh, there's a workshop there that makes these wonderful this is only one example of the knives that they make there and now this is helping me kind of um, like get things together in a camping situation uh, I didn't have a good knife before I was waiting for the special the right moment to buy the the right knife and um, this trip has, has uh, realized that thought so um, yeah uh, still a lot for me to do this evening before I set up my kitchen and and uh, and have a good meal and then hopefully a good sleep without being disturbed oh, yeah, by by bears Cycling the Arctic in September. I still can't believe I'm doing this. Well, here it is, uh, the Arctic tundra. Uh, bleak, but nonetheless uh, beautiful. Um, with the weather to go with it, it's constantly raining again and uh, getting a bit cold and uh, sometimes miserable but a uh, few more days to go and then I'll, I'll reach the top and hopefully the weather will get better by then. A supposedly bear proof bin finish style. Well this is how things look on the morning of day 16 um, here in the camping here in the uh, uh, Arctic environment. Um, there's my tent, the bicycle is all getting prepared uh, for um, border, border crossing to Norway. There's a border town and um, Norway is very very expensive so I'm, I'm trying to optimize all my gear um, to pack as much um, uh, supplies in there as possible before I hit Norway. Well day 16 and here I am on the Norwegian border finally. Um, uh, it's about 100, what is it, 200, 1,800 uh, kilometers uh, of riding and about 270 left to the North Cape. And after that I'm hoping to make my way down to Tromso. Um, uh, I'm still on the Finnish side here and uh, th for, for some reason, like there's, there's a town up there, <laughs> for some reason there are people, <laughs> there's, there's, People with, with Norwegian number plates just with crates and crates of beer out, just piling out of the supermarket. It's very much cheaper for them uh, to go shopping in Norway. And that, that's why I've spent a lot of time in the supermarket. And believe me, I am full to the brim. Um, you, you don't really see it from the outside on the bike, but like I am stocked to, to the eyeballs. Um, I've even come down to uh, taping, taping things that I don't really need regularly uh, to the exterior of the bike and uh, here is my sock drying method as I'm riding it helps pad my hands as well but it doesn't work very well because uh, more often than not it does rain uh, so the socks don't really get much of a chance to dry this is a very rare um, this is a very rare dry spell at the moment so Better get on the bike and uh, start riding soon. Uh, with regard to the landscape, it's um, really interesting. It, the the, uh, the the pine is giving way to shrub-like birch, uh, no more than six meters in height. And um, well, this town's a bit different, but uh, yeah, it, it really is starting to look like tundra now. Not just patches of it, but it's getting consistent. So okay, well, in about three days, uh, I hope to be where I uh, set out to go to. Cycling in Finnmark on a good day. Check this out. Guess what that wet stuff is? It's the Norwegian uh, fjordlands. Yeah, I made it. I made it to uh, the fjords of Norway, the beautiful, beautiful mountain district. Um, 
further uh, that way is uh, the North Sea and that's the way I'm heading uh, towards uh, North Cape and uh, like the environment here is very interesting down the bottom you still see uh, trees um, most of them are, are like shrub like um, birch but then up there there's nothing I finally have fire in the tundra and uh, it's all thanks to a chance meeting with a, a local Sami guy by the side of the road um, I was just having a rest and uh, he was inquiring as to like where I was going and um, how do I spend my nights and I say uh, I camp and that immediately got his interest and the first thing he did was he, he looked at my feet saw my boots and I got a, a um, acknowledging nod and then he asked me about fire and I told him about all the problems that I was having um, starting fire in the tundra because uh, there's no wood there that I, I knew of that um, uh, I could get to burn it was making life very reasonable miserable for me and um, I mean it's not for lack of trying believe me and uh, he said then he, when he heard that he quickly jumped down the side of the road went to a bush snapped off a twig and he said use this and uh, I said willow well they're not trees they're all bushes around here because they're all very small he said willow yes you could get the dry twigs of willow and um, and all the other methods that I already knew about um, uh, and um, you can get a fire started even when it's raining and sure enough here finally with that knowledge here I am now um, coffee brewing a nice warm breakfast and um, spirits are very much improved um, compared to the last few days I'm inside the Nordcap Tunnel. Uh, it's eerily quiet and peaceful down here. No cars coming. You could sit down and have a game of chess and nobody would, would, <laughs> would bother you. But uh, the uh, it, most interesting thing about this tunnel is it starts going into a mountain. But you notice that it's got a very steep decline. That means that it's actually going, we're going to be going underwater for, uh, for a couple of kilometers actually because uh, Nordcap is actually removed from the mainland. Never had a, a brunch break under the North Sea before. Um, still in the tunnel. Like going that way and that way uh, along the walls. You can see uh, all along the walls, walls there's water leaking. Uh, it's, it's an interesting situation to be in. And, um, yeah, this is a rest stop, or oh, well, some sort of bay here, and um, this is um, this shows how far either way it is to get out at the moment. So uh, it's quite a long tunnel, and uh, it's a long way um, for me to go. It's actually quite steep uphill now for me, for me to get out. This is it then. Well, the road just don't go no further north. Um, I've made it to uh, North Cape, the most northerly part of Europe, and uh, uh, it's a good. The weather's been kind to me. Usually, apparently, it's very blustery out here. Um, you know, I kind of, you know, that wasn't the main aim. It kind of the plan just kind of evolved as things went along. And to be honest, two months ago, I knew nothing about this place. Regard to the journey, uh, it's the most educational one I've had. Like this whole region was a total mystery to me, and I've learned so much along the way. And um, I'm just enjoying the moment at the moment, and uh, I've been saving a, uh, a can of uh, of uh, braised braised reindeer, uh, which I'll which I'll still have uh, to give me strength to get back. Because it's quite a Quite a hard ride up and down hills, uh, down to um, go back to the mainland, and then um, it's going to be 
a tough ride over the mountains uh, on my slow journey home. From Riga it's been uh, 2,100 kilometres uh, uh, riding um, and I would love, I've enjoyed this trip so much that I'd love to actually, uh, not, not if I had to go further north, uh, but I would love to um, just uh, ride, um, ride back because uh, the weather would be getting nicer and there'd be lower altitude and it would be really nice to actually go back along the Swedish coast down to Stockholm and then catch a ferry uh, back to Riga. But uh, yeah, there's a bit of a time limit and I'm already exceeding my time. Um, so it looks like the plan now is just to get to um, to, to Tron, Trondheim which is uh, probably about seven days still to go. Uh, and to get there I have to go across these crazy mountains and uh, I've been that there might be snow and ice on the roads but once I get to the fjords I think um, it's going to be absolutely uh, an unforgettable ride.